And now we'll take a look at a clinical overview. There are a number of issues of concern with feeding difficulties, and for the sake of brevity, I will highlight some of them. Some children do actually have growth limitations. In this UK birth cohort study, they compared children who were identified as having feeding disorders to children who were not so identified, and looked at their weights. The children who were identified as having feeding difficulties had weights below the fifth percentile at three times the rate at 30 months of age than their controls. Some children have been identified as having suboptimal consumption of nutrients. Children with feeding difficulties have been identified as having a much lower consumption of fruit and vegetables and meat and alternates than recommended. As well, they've been identified as having lower consumption of calcium and vitamin C and pyridoxine, as well as protein and total energy. Irene Chatur has studied the parent-child interactions, looking at the mental development index of children, and compared healthy eaters to those children with picky eating and infantile anorexia demonstrating a statistically significant lower score for the children with picky eating and infantile anorexia compared to the children with healthy eating. Now, does parental pressure to eat make matters worse? In one study, parental pressure on the child to eat was correlated with lower child body weight and or BMI. However, the direction of causality was not clear. In a second study looking at parental pressure to eat, maternal pressure to eat at one year negatively predicted the child's weight at two years even when controlling for the child weight at one year and therefore suggests that the causality is in the direction of maternal pressure to eat causing low weight in their child.